Um, what do you make of the decision, first of all, of the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, who's just arrived in Israel? He's going to be meeting with leaders. He's also going to be meeting some survivors of these terrible attacks. What do you make of the significance of that? Well, well done, James Cleverly, is, is all I can say. I think, as you said uh, a minute or two ago, uh, solidarity, showing visible solidarity with Israel is really important in circumstances like this. And I can't help noting that while EU foreign ministers are arguing amongst themselves in Brussels, our foreign minister is out in Israel dealing with the problem on the ground with the Israelis. Indeed, offering our support. They are one of our closest allies and also one of America's closest allies. Um, We've talked a lot about feelings, about this, our reaction. Everyone is horror. Everyone who has any moral backbone at all is horrified by what's happened. Um, what do you make of the, uh, the conflation of the sort of the comparisons between, well, Gaza has been under siege from the Israelis. These people, the 2.2 million people living in Gaza, are, 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 are facing terrible atrocities themselves. That, that some people have said, you know, this was always going to happen, these, these massacre of these Israelis, this was Hamas pushed to it. The retaliation back that we are seeing right now in terms of the bombardment from Israeli forces, the likely ground invasion. What do you make of the moral equivalence that a lot of people are making about these events? Well, I think it's really important to kind of look to the moral core of these these problems. Obviously, it is a there's a lot of history, it's a complicated situation, but the the moral truth is that hundreds, thousands of people have been killed by Hamas terrorists on the rampage and the conclusion that the Israelis have drawn, and I expect them to draw, is that Israel cannot live alongside a Hamas government that allows its people to do these things. So they will have to act and they will have to dismantle the, the Hamas government and the people who are responsible for these. And drawn. there's no doubt about the, the, the level of the bombardment that we are seeing from uh, uh, from the Israeli forces against uh, Gaza right now. We are going to be seeing civilians, you know, dying. We're already seeing numbers dying. And given that half the population of Gaza is are, are children, we're going to see a lot of more children getting um, getting killed and injured. Is, is the bombardment of a highly built-up area with lots of civilians, is that a proportional, res proportionate response to what has happened uh, in Israel? Well, I think a proportional response to the massacre of large numbers of your citizens is going after the people who committed that act and trying to punish them. And I think that's what the Israelis are going to do. The IDF is well known for uh, conducting its operations in as responsible a way as it can. Obviously, it's Giving warnings to... before they exactly. bomb certain buildings. It's not going to target civilians. It's responding to a grotesque act committed against their country. And I absolutely understand why they're acting as they do. They, Netanyahu and many other Israeli leaders have, uh, have, have talked about how this is their 9-11. When we think about the response that America had to 9-11, the invasion of Afghanistan, and actually later, even though there wasn't actually a link, uh, I I Iraq as well, you know, many, many people died as a result. That was, I mean, the Afghanistan war was certainly had huge uh, international support. There will not be huge international support for what the Israeli forces are going to be doing in Gaza. It's expected in the coming days they've called up, what, 300,000 reservists, people flying back in around the world. They've got an army of more than uh, of 600,000 in total with those reservists. A ground war, a ground invasion of Gaza, that is going to divide a lot of their natural allies, isn't it? I, I, it, it's a realistic possibility, certainly. I mean, I, I do hope that the West can stick together on this question, because it seems to me it's a really important uh, indication of our own resolve. I can't help noticing that, you know, these things happen when the West looks weak. President Biden has spent the last year not really supporting Israel on very much, being very equivocal about uh, Pres uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Look what happens. You have to be robust. You have to stand by your allies. Otherwise, these things happen if you look weak. This is the thing. A lot of people will say, well, this is something happening in a faraway land. They're horrified by it. But well, how does it affect me? There are lots of repercussions for us in terms of our own safety. There are repercussions for us in terms of our economy. Um, you know, when, when, when oil prices go up, that hits inflation. Europe is going to be hit by that. Now, that's a small price to pay, smaller than the price families in Israel have paid. Of course, we are not trying to make an equivalence there. But a lot of people perhaps will say, other than that, what, how, how does that happening over there affect me? Tell us what the, 
the global, the geopolitical repercussions are of the reignition of a hot war as opposed to effectively a cold war in the Middle East is going to mean? Well, I think it's a consequence, really, of what we've been seeing in the last few years, which is the, the world is dividing uh, gradually and slowly into two groups, the West and the rest. And it's obvious that much of the rest wants to undermine Western countries, ruin our prosperity, make life more difficult for us generally. And we've seen the Ukraine war, that's part of it. We've seen China's um, sabre rattling. We now see this and the involvement of Iran. And we have have to be serious about what that actually means for us. Each individual thing, maybe you can look the other way, but you've got to look at the pattern and we have to understand that our own prosperity and security means standing by our allies. Our allies. And this is the thing, isn't it? Because there is, um, there, there are hands in this, there are fingers in the eyes behind this, which are not obvious in terms of lots of point, fingers were pointing at, um, of course, at Iran. Mm. And Iran has been funding Hamas and supporting Hamas. They're the biggest funders of terror globally. Uh, we know that already. But they're not thought to have, been, to have instructed this particular yeah. attack. There's thought that uh, Russia, um, other countries, will have been involved somehow in terms of encouraging uh, this, happy to ferment this now. And that is the destabilizing of the Middle East, the destabilizing of our ally, destabilizing of Europe are all part of that agenda. Yeah, our enemies are opportunists. You know, there, I don't think there's a grand plot, uh, but they take advantage when we are weak. And that is that is what we are seeing. And I think one of the big problems of our foreign policy, UK foreign policy over the last few years, has been our bewildering attraction to Iran and our wish to see the best in Iran and to think that we can find some sort of agreement all the time with Iran. Well, surely this, OK, maybe they didn't pull the trigger, but surely this shows that we cannot continue why, with Iran's Why work. is the West, why, you know, why, do, why is it, you know, America or Britain, whoever it is, why, why are they unable to see, for instance, oh, what a surprise, Russia is saying they don't recognise, say, for instance, Ukraine's existence as an independent nation state, they amass 120,000 troops on the border, um, and then everyone goes, oh, we're really, really surprised that they've invaded Ukraine. Um, uh, why, why are they not able to see these risks in advance? what's happened in Israel and to act accordingly. Why, why is the West so weak? Why, is it, why are they not able to sort of understand the real politique that we are living in? I mean, it is often easier to look the other way. And I think, you know, we and the Americans and others seem to have seen the Ukraine attack coming and others less so. That, that appears to be the situation. Uh, it's very easy to look the other way. Yeah. Uh, and we've just got, I think we've just got complacent in the West about what's going on. And okay. we keep getting wake up calls. We need to wake up.